everyone, it's Ben with Arctic Cat, and in this series, we are diving deep into the world of engineering, specifically all things Catalyst. In this episode, we're gonna be covering suspension. Joining me here today is Guy Sibilo, who's really integral in the development process of the trail and the crossover lineup. Guy, thanks for joining us. Yeah, pleased to be here. So Guy, let's go back in time a little bit. Give me a history lesson. When we look at AWS, what does that stand for and where did it come from? So AWS, Arctic Cat Wishbone Suspension, first introduced 1990 on the Prowler, was revolutionary at the time. Uh, double wishbones were never included on a snowmobile. Uh, so the engineering team developed a system that mimicked a lot of that type of characteristics. Uh, the characteristics have obviously over time have kind of changed, but overall the double wishbone uh, systems have revolutionized the snowmobiles. Basically the whole industry now has gone to the double wishbone suspension. So over the years, obviously 33 years have come and gone, and a lot of iterations have come, but uh, we feel that the catalyst, with all that was learned on the racetrack and through years of, of engineering, uh, we've, we feel that we really hit the nail on the head, so to speak. So AWS has been part of the Arctic Cat lineup for a very long time. What changes have been made with the catalyst platform? So the catalyst, the very beginning when we started on this project, lots of things have changed around, we moved things around. And what we found is moving the skis and the rear suspensions back, approximately 56 millimeters have made a huge change to the catalyst. Uh, the catalyst, as, as we all know, the mass centralization, the lower CG, we wanted to make the vehicle a lot more nimble. So by moving the skis back, uh, we've really seen that the chassis could really react a lot better, a lot quicker, uh, better handling in the corners. Uh, so it, it really made a big difference on that. As everyone sees the, from our past chassis, the triangulated type of suspension uh, has been, been around for about 10, 12 years. Uh, so we've continued with that because of the triangulation of the chassis, we feel is much stiffer, much stronger. There's also benefits to the suspension when that comes along. Triangulated changes a two-dimensional wishbone to a three-dimensional wishbone. So now we've got caster and camber that now gets blended kind of as one. We also have tread change and then longitudinal change. So all this kind of blends in and really makes the catalyst really shine because of the centralized mass. Yeah, every topic that we've covered so far really has centralized mass and weight reduction incorporated into that topic. And it's right. cool to see suspension is still a part of that as well. When we look at the ZR model specs, AWS 42 is listed as a specification. Does that just mean it's a 42 inch ski stance? That is correct. And is that still adjustable? We do have some adjustability in the ski. So the ski basically has two bushings on either side of the spindle. So a person can adjust about an inch one way or inch the other way. So there is some adjustability there as well, if somebody chooses to. And the crossover, moving to that, has a 39 inch ski stance. How's that different, obviously, other than the, the width than the ZR? It's very similar in, in the, the way that the characteristics of how that suspension works. You know, the, the A-arms obviously are shorter, spindles are the same, but we've, we've played with different widths. Obviously today we have four different widths in our lineup. Uh, we felt that three would probably be suffice. So we played around with, with different widths and we felt that the 39 basically was the sweet spot between a crossover and being able to have the, the trail characteristics that a person would need. You have both worlds. Now, when we talked about chassis earlier, we talked about the steering system a little bit, but I wanna go into a little bit more detail with you because it's so well connected with the suspension system. Tell me a little bit about what's new with the steering system and the catalyst. So the steering system with the Articat snowmobile has really changed over the years. Uh, the old steering systems on the, the older AWS was a rack steering. The latest chassis, we went to a centralized bell crank. Uh, the triangulated geometry gave us that ability to be able to simplify the, the steering system to a single bell crank. With the Catalyst, we've taken it a step further. We've actually used technology that was developed for the Snowcross racetrack which is what we call progressive steering. And it's actually kind of changes the ratio of how the input of the handlebars to the skis. So the initial input into the handlebars, we've got a ratio of like 2.5 to one, which the rider will instantaneously feel it, that it's, it's like, whoa, this is really, really light. And the ratio pretty much stays steady all the way through from one lock to the other. So that the ratio steering is, 
really a, a big step for a consumer sled. So moving to the rear of the sled, how has the rear suspension changed in the new Catalyst platform for the performance models? As I mentioned before, uh, we moved the rear suspensions back roughly 56 millimeters. So when you do that, and with the centralized mass and the, and the, the fact that the suspension is a little further back from the rider and, and the centralized mass, some of the geometry has to change. Uh, the loads are inputted into the suspension differently. So the calibrations of the front shock and the rear shock and the springs all have to get redone. There are some geometries that have changed, like for example, the 129. The 129 rear suspension is, is brand new ground up. It's slated for trail. So we wanted to keep the sled flat and yet still have a little bit of liveliness in the feel of the sled. So the, the front arm is much longer. With the chassis, a lot of our suspension mounts in the tunnel have been commonized. So what we've done is we've reconfigured our suspension so that in manufacturing, we've got a common location. So that, you know, even though the suspensions are slightly different, for 129, 137, 146, they're all the same location. So we've moved things around and even the 137 is, you look at it, yeah, it looks like the same thing, but no, it's, it's been recalibrated, springing, shock valving. Um, so there's been some changes at, at glance, you think it didn't change, but when you get on the catalyst and you ride it, you will feel the differences. So Guy, when I look at the front of this suspension system, obviously the one thing that stands out to me, the spindles, they look all new. Can you tell me a little bit about the design process? So our spindle, obviously, as you said, the, the first thing you see the catalyst, you look at the spindles and they're just screaming at you. It's like, whoa, this is, looks like it comes from outer space. It's really high tech. So what the engineering team uses is we, we collect a lot of data. In, in the years of, of uh, the catalyst, we've collected so much data into the front suspension to be able to create that, you know, the lightweight and the minimized parts and, and the, all that good stuff. So we actually use optimization software. Now, this is an example of what the optimization software will do. It'll take the data that we input it and give it some constraints like upper ball joint, lower ball joint, ski, and it will produce a really funky model like this. So this is an AI generated model of the most optimum spindle that Correct. we can design. Right. So when you look at this, it's like, yeah, we can't manufacture this. So what we do is we take the input from that and then we develop this. So this has been optimized using FEA and the practices of today's manufacturing abilities and we've produced this spindle. Now this spindle has basically the spine where the load comes through and then what we call the veins right alongside here and right alongside here. So we end up with the catalyst spindle. And there's some similarities you can see with the AI generated model and what we've come to produce. So it's pretty cool to see that we're using technology to help produce and manufacture these. It's not just somebody sketching something down on a notepad. Correct. Yeah, there's a lot of technology that's gone into a lot of the catalyst and it's, you feel it. I mean, the, the optimization of many things, uh, the driveline, the suspensions, the engine, the, you know, everything that we've put into the catalyst platform is, is all, you know, a lot of technology from the Articat engineering team. Very cool. Now, we talked a little bit about some of the adjustments that have been made with the wishbone suspension. How does that mount differently on a spindle than what we're used to on previous trail and crossover models? The geometries, I mean, a lot of the stuff that we, over the years, have figured out that some of the geometries that we like and don't like. So with the Catalyst, we've, again, using snowcross, cross-country racing, We've come up with geometries that, yeah, this feels really good on the, you know, not only on the racetrack, but for the consumer as well. Lower ball joint, upper ball joint has kind of been locked in mm -hmm. and we basically build around. Very cool. So another testament to the weight reduction, mass centralization and lower center of gravity that we just keep talking about with the catalyst. So Guy, we touched a little bit on the triangulation and how that all incorporates into the design of this and the suspension system. Now that we have something here to visualize it, show me what exactly you're talking about. So as you can see in the frame, we've got that large triangle where the steering points lie between the lower and the upper A arms, lie right where they need to be to get the best bump steer in the industry. Another thing that I'm looking at here that looks totally new to me is this steering post. Tell me, where does this design come from and what's different about it? So the steering system on the Catalyst, now that we have a central post, lends us to what we call the progressive steering. 
Now we have a centralized bell crank we've used in, in past years, but this is different. This has actually got what we almost call power steering, but not power steering. So we got the leverage between the post and the bell crank. And as the system works, it's 2.5 to one ratio. As the rider turns the first two and a half degrees, the skis only move one degree, so, and so on. So as you turn, you will feel that, that you're not being loaded through the handlebars. There looks like there's less components overall as well. Is that true? That is true. We've actually reduced quite a few components with the catalyst. Again, back to weight reduction, mass sensorialization. So that we've really touched everything on this snowmobile to make it react the way it is. So the steering system is obviously something that the rider is connected with at all times. And this is just another way that we're enhancing the rider experience by providing a optimum steering experience. Very cool. Well, Guy, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. We talked a lot about the trail and the crossover suspension. Now I'd like to introduce Jake Crosby to talk a little bit about the mountain segment. Jake, thanks for joining us. So out front here, we've got obviously the rear alpha skid, which a lot of people are familiar with. And we've also got a mountain spindle. Tell me, starting with the front end, what's changed with the Catalyst platform? So we've optimized the front suspension for added deep snow performance. Starting with the spindle, uh, we've actually uh, strengthened the design and we've actually extended the bottom length to give sort of a, an elevated uh, A-arm clearance. Uh, which is something that we heard from our customer base that was desired. We also were able to take and build off of our, our bone spindle design, which we really like the performance of, and design a, a sleek, nice looking spindle that uh, has very good deep snow performance and, and can really cut through the snow efficiently. Now, what about the steering system? We've already talked a little bit about how that's been optimized for pretty much all the Catalyst vehicles, but how does that affect the mountain segment specifically? So we spend a lot of time on the center line steering in the, the Catalyst mountain platform to reduce drag in the system, reduce part count um, and potential slot points and just give a, a very stout feeling center line stand up steering that um, meets the performance needs of our customers. So people are really going to be able to feel a difference when they're riding this thing, steering it through oh, deep snow. Sure. Yeah, uh, steering effort is dramatically reduced, uh, which is, is a huge benefit for uh, fatigue in deep snow riding conditions. Um, so if you can ride longer, you're going to have a lot more fun. And that was a huge goal for us. So. so moving to the rear of the sled, this is the alpha rail system that we've been running for a long time now. Uh, it's been proven to be durable, effective, and an amazing platform in the back of the mountain segment. What's different about the alpha skid? It's the industry's best deep snow uh, rear suspension. So we're just building on that performance by optimizing the front arm and rear arm geometry for the catalyst platform, giving it a little bit more playful feel, but also the precision uh, that our customers demand. Um, and one big thing that customers will see with this uh, rear suspension change is that uh, they can dramatically change the performance of the vehicle by where they stand on the vehicle. And it plays right into lower center of mass, uh, our lower weight, obviously the lightest skid in the mountain segment today. Um, so we're just building off of that. We also have the adjustable limiter strap for uh, customers that wanna fine tune their ride. So like I said, the Alpha platform has been out for a long time. Give us some more highlights about why this is such a unique platform and the benefits that you get riding in deep snow. Well, I mean, it's the, it's the best mountain rear suspension on the market, bar none. I mean, it, it sheds snow incredibly well, so you're not carrying excess weight. It's optimized for loading in multiple directions. Uh, it's minimized part count. It contributes to less rider fatigue, so you can ride longer and it also contributes to a more efficient way to put power to the snow. So uh, you're not spinning, you're not trenching, you're accelerating up the hill and you're, you're climbing past your buddies. In my experience, I've noticed with the Alpha that this machine floats better, it's more balanced on a side hill, uh, and it's just an overall more enjoyable and easier to ride vehicle than I've ever experienced. Yeah, for sure. What track lengths are offered in the new Catalyst platform? Uh, we're going with the, the 146 and the 154 for the mountain suspension, and we're offering our 2.6 and 3-inch power claw tracks. So these are all tracks and uh, lengths that people are pretty familiar with and are excited to ride. Definitely, uh, and our 3-inch track is the top deep snow track in the industry. 
most flotation, best climbing, um, and paired with the alpha rail, uh, gives you the best chance of, of not being stuck and less rider fatigue. So really, no matter the snow conditions or the riding style, we've got a track length and a track designed for just about everybody. Definitely. Well, cool. Well, Jake, thanks for joining us today. Up next, we're going to introduce Steve, who's going to talk to us a little bit more about the rear skids of the trail and the crossover lineup. So, Steven, thanks for joining us today. Yeah, thanks. So, I'm looking at something that looks entirely new to me. Tell me about what I'm looking at right now. Yeah, so this is a 129. It's an all-new layout for Catalyst. Starting in the rear, it's a unique geometry, unlike anything else in the rest of the ZR lineup. It's actually uncoupled. It still controls weight transfer, so it gives an extremely playful feeling. Yet, we have the cross-country, long arm in front, and it still allows the sled to corner really flat. Where did this come from? I mean, what inspired designing the 129 in a consumer sled? So we really came back to cross-country racing routes, and that's where it all started. So the front half, cross-country, and the back half is kind of a combination inspired by a few other models. Very cool. And what sort of suspension options are available here? I see that we've got an IFP shock on here now. Is there anything else that this is offered in? Yep, it'll also be available in the attack, uh, giving you the three quick switch options. Now, moving to the RXC, is there anything different with that sled? Yeah, so it's, it's quite a bit different in Catalyst. The biggest uh, being that we are in a 137 this year. The whole rear half is different. We've actually taken the parts directly from the 2023 Snowcross sleds, and we've adapted it to cross country. So extremely durable, and it provides improved control, handling, bottom out protection, and it basically keeps the sled tracking really straight through any obstacle that's thrown at it. And on top of that, it's the most durable skid that we have. Now, shifting gears to the crossover lineup, the Riot is considered probably more capable off-trail than ever before. What sort of things have contributed to that? Yeah, so uh, a huge thing is that in the Catalyst, the, the rider position has shifted more over the front arm. And so with all new shock valving, we've been able to optimize it for on-trail handling, yet give improved lift and flotation off trail. And what sort of track options are available in the Riot lineup? So it is available with both a 1.6 and 1.75 inch lug, um, all 146 inch track lengths, but it just gives uh, a couple options in case you're more of an on-trail guy or, or you like to play off trail too. What about shock packages for the Riot? Are there any uh, options that you have there? Yeah, so that's also available in IFP and Attack as well. Very cool. Well, Steve, thanks so much for joining us today. If you guys want to learn more about the Catalyst platform, visit articat.com slash catalyst.